Uh, let me really start by explaining what iCoach Kids Plus is. So it is really a follow-up to the original iCoach Kids project that we started uh, over four years ago now. Um, and at the time, uh, we, we really focused on five to 12 year olds. Uh, it was a project co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. And what we wanted to do is to extend the project from that five to 12 year old focus to 13 to 18 year olds. Because at that point, there's a lot of things happening really uh, with, with young people in sport. And we wanted to focus on two of those things. And the first one was the idea of preventing dropout in youth sport. We know that in that period between 13 and 18 years of age, that's when a lot of the dropout tends to happen. And we also know that at that point, uh, by contrast to dropout, uh, a lot of children actually go into what we call talent development environments, okay? And they start spending in excess of 10, 15, or even 20 hours uh, doing their sport every day. So we wanted to really look at those two issues over a period of three years with this new project. So what are we gonna do uh, in, in the three years? We're gonna do two main things. We're gonna do some research into dropout. We want to understand the trends, uh, the, the current trends across a lot of European countries and a lot of sports, how, how is dropout? And we also wanted to understand why children drop out. So that's the dropout part of the, of the project. In terms of talent development, we want to understand the perceptions of coaches, parents and players of the talent development environments they are involved in. No one has ever looked at, at what those three uh, groups of the stakeholders really of people think about uh, uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, how holistic, how uh, conducive to personal development are these environments. And on the back of that, we would like to develop some guidelines to, to help clubs and, and federations to set up really holistic environments. And once we've done those two pieces of research with what we learn, we're gonna create two new free e-learning courses, one on preventing dropout and one on creating holistic talent development environments. At which point I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Stacy, uh, who has been leading on the dropout research so she can tell us what we found out. Thanks, Sergio. Um, so just to build initially on what, what Sergio started with there, um, where we're at the moment is we're, we're exploring um, dropout trends um, across the EU. Um, it, it's widely known that, that, that we do see um, an increase in dropout in adolescence. So starting to particularly progress into sort of the, the 13 to 18 age category. Um, but we're not really clear on why those trends are necessarily occurring. Um, so that's where we're at with the research at the moment is starting to explore that. We know the importance of keeping um, adolescents involved in sport both from um, physical and, and mental health perspective um, so where we're at in terms of the literature um, obviously initially doing a search of the literature before getting into our own research um, there has been systematic reviews done in the area collating um, dropout trends across different countries across the world um, but what we don't really have at the moment is an up-to-date understanding of the landscape across, across Europe. So that's been our first aim and our, our first goal with, with what we've been doing so far. So our research aims and, and sort of questions um, is to look at participation rates of children and young people and how these vary across different ages and stages of development um, and across different countries and across different genders. Um, the way we've, we've initially started doing that is to look at pre-existing data. So what we've done and, and is start to collect data across a range of countries, which is highlighted by, by the pins on the map. And we have to sort of really send thanks to, to all the iCoach Kid partners who've really helped us massively to, to get this data and share the data and, and reach out to as many sports and countries as possible, which, uh, as I move on to shortly, has allowed us to um, generate a very large sample of data, which is some of the, the largest data sets currently out there within, within the literature and within research. So we've collected data from a range of nations for, for both uh, girls and boys and, and a range of sports. Um, but as I build on shortly, we, did, we have had some challenges with data collection in, in that 
there is some data we've had to, to leave out and, and this maybe leads to discussions which go beyond today's presentation, but is there a need for us really to look to try and standardize how we collect participation data, um, not just within one particular sport, but across all sports to allow us to really track uh, these young people and their journey through sport um, to, to really start to get into further detail around dropout rates to, to help us develop strategies to keep them involved. But for the purpose of, of this research so far, um, to be included within the sample, we ensured that the sport had to have data for both males and females within that particular sport, um, as we wanted to look at was there any um, differences in trends between gender. We had age categories ranging from under eights right up to under 20. So while the focus of, of the iCoach Kids Plus is, is in that adolescent age range, um, we needed the, the wide sample so we could look at um, where those dropout trends occurred. And that for each sport that was included in, in that nation, they had to have a minimum of three con consecutive age groups. And we had some fantastic data shared from a range of sports and nations where we had huge data sets um, over many years, which we are starting to explore in more detail. But in other parts of the data, we had much smaller samples of one year. So for the purpose of to be included in this initial part of, of the research, uh, where there was multiple years of data, we averaged that. So we just took data from 2017 to 2019 so that we had a current up-to-date uh, understanding of participation as alluded to sort of previous research um, as, as being conducted a number of years ago. So we wanted an up-to-date understanding of, of where we're currently at. So this is kind of the, the, the numbers we've, we've got in the data set so far. So, so a huge sample um, and a good spread of, of data from all the age groups, so under eights up to under 16s. And then what's really great with the data set and quite novel is we've got quite a, a wide range of sports from a range of different nations. So hopefully giving us a real good understanding of the landscape across, across Europe. And this is just some of the initial findings, obviously just with time constraints tonight, uh, we just need to keep it at a higher level, but um, we can see that we, we are seeing some quite uh, consistent trends within the data, particularly looking at from that under 14 category up, upwards. Um, and that would be consistent with some of our thinking um, and some of the other literature. Um, we know there are some significant changes in terms of growth and maturation that occur for both boys and girls um, in that adolescent period. And that this may impact um, not on just what they can do uh, physically, but also psychosocially as well. And uh, I think this kind of is some real exciting findings initially that we have, um, which we can hopefully use to start to really inform some of the e-learning resources um, alongside the other findings of, of the other research that's currently ongoing to start to look at how can we help develop coach education around this period of, of adolescence uh, to try and keep um, more children involved in sport longer. Um, key points just to take away though is that, that while we do see that, tr that trend um, around adolescence of, of dropout and we have thoughts around that, uh, we are starting to explore some of the larger data sets we have within a particular sport or within particular nations um, to really do some more in-depth detailed case studies to really start to explore further um, some different trends between boys and girls or some particularly interesting trends we are seeing within a particular sport. So we will share those findings uh, once we complete that analysis. But um, there is a need to, to keep exploring this further. And as I sort of briefly highlight, highlighted, there is a need for us to look at how we can um, develop a standardized tracking system um, to ensure that we're not always just taking this cross-sectional approach to analyzing dropout by almost like a snapshot approach. And can we develop um, almost identifier codes for each participant so we can track them through their individual journey through sport um, and really start to identify the, those key periods of, of dropout. Thanks, Sergio, I'll hand back over to you.
Okay, so uh, thanks a million, Stacey. And, and, and before I carry on, uh, I wanted to really uh, recognize the, the work that Stacey and the rest of the team are doing with this research, because it's not easy research to do. And also the work of the partners is fantastic that they, they've been able to, to collect all these data and, and to analyze it really. We're understanding a lot more about this phenomenon. But we didn't want to stop there. We wanted to, to actually know a bit more about it really. So what are the next steps really? As well as understanding the trends, which is a complex picture, Okay. We also want to understand why kids are dropping out of sport. And of course, this has been looked at in the past. Okay. We know that research, previous research has identified over 150 dropout factors. Okay. Now, having said that, less is known about two things, about how these factors interact with each other and with other features of the environment, like the dropout, uh, the age of the child at dropout or the type of sport, or, or the country or the socioeconomic status of the child. And also less is known about the trajectories that children take really in terms of uh, some children never join sport, some children join and then drop out, some children drop out and then re-engage and some children never drop out, okay? So we need to understand a little bit more how that happens. And to do that, we are developing a, a new youth sport dropout model. And we're trying to conceptualize a youth sport dropout as a behavior that can be influenced by pressing the right buttons for different people. We're building this model using something called the combi model, which basically says that for a behavior to take place, and in our case, the behavior we want is that children join sport and stay in sport, three things need to happen. For a child to join sport and stay in sport, they have to have the capability to do that, both in terms of the, the competence to, to play sport, but also the competence to join sport. They have to have the opportunity to be able to join a sport session, and they have to have the motivation to do that. When those three things are met, there's a stronger chance that this will happen. So we're turning this uh, model into a youth sport dropout questionnaire so we can investigate these factors in, in a large sample. At the moment, the, uh, the questionnaire is being tested and it's been reviewed by 13 experts from all over the world. So far, we, we have 13 dimensions or groups of factors, so related factors, uh, and 40 questions. And we also have a demographic section because we want to understand the trajectories and how other factors may impact on, on the child. And it's going to be administered to a large sample of university students across eight European countries. And that's where we're up to so far. Okay, so watch this space. Hopefully for the next iCoach Kids conference, we can give you all the information, all the findings from these from these studies.